When I was a little kid, I wanted to be on the tugboats like my dad. I think most, you know, sons are like that. But as I got older, I, I was thinking about maybe I'd like to be a police officer, an RCMP officer. And then along the way, I started listening to the radio. In my last year of high school, I took a broadcasting course, the Columbia School of Broadcasting, uh, to learn how to be an announcer. And a guy that I went to high school with was working on the rock station in Regina. And he said, hey, Greg, there's an opening at the country station. I thought, hmm, country? Well, I like Johnny Cash and a few other country artists. So I got this job and I went to Regina and spent a year there as the all-night disc jockeys. And then I got, I think, you know, one of the big breaks in my broadcasting career. I was like 22 years old and I got a job in Medicine Hat, Alberta. And I was given the opportunity to be on television. No teleprompters back then. You had to memorize almost uh, 15 minutes of sports. Uh, I became more and more comfortable. Then they had me reading the news as well and doing weather. And so after being there for a year and gaining confidence, I sent off some audition tapes and I was hired uh, by a station in Vancouver. Here I was in my hometown and it was during that time that uh, I was just kind of on top of the world. And I think in some ways it was where I really had a crisis uh, I don't know if I call it a crisis of faith or a life crisis. When a, you know, a guy that I went to high school with a um, year younger was killed in a car accident. And that led to some discussion with my dad. You know, what happens when you die? And, uh, you know, do we just die and that's it? But it was during that time that I really started to search. And it was, you know, so I ended up Anyway, going to Edmonton, uh, working as a, as a broadcaster in Edmonton, sportscaster, reporter, and anchor. Actually announcing today that they have given the orders another 560 tickets to go for draft day on Saturday. And then there's this young lady that I had met down in Medicine Hat named Arlene. We dated a little bit in Medicine Hat. She went to Edmonton, I went to Vancouver. Uh, we reconnected in Edmonton and she had a church background. So we started to go to church and eventually ended up in a little Baptist church in West Edmonton. And after being there for several months, I gave my life to, to the Lord Jesus. When he met Jesus, it just, it changed his entire life. It just turned him right around. So that has been a huge influence for me. And it's been a ride walking with him. I mean, I was raised in a Christian home, but was fairly complacent and I feel like in walking with Greg the complacency was gone. I just saw a man who was pursuing Jesus with his whole heart and it convicted me. We were married, Arlene and I, and we had uh, two young kids, Matt and Sarah, and I felt this call to Bible school. So my idea at that time was that I started to watch this program called 100 Huntley Street and a guy named David Maines was on there, and Father Bob McDougall. And so here I'm a new Christian, I'm, I'm watching this program, and I'm thinking, I would like to do that. I'm a, I love broadcasting, and I'm now a Christian, and I would like to take my broadcasting skills and, and put it together. So I ended up going to Bible school, I graduated after three years. Uh, during that time, started to do some pastoral ministry, and eventually we would go on to Winnipeg, uh, work for a ministry there called It's a New Day. Because I've met many people that are just passionate Christians that used to hate Christians. He said, a racehorse can run fast in either direction. <laughs> and it was while I was at It's a New Day that uh, TSN, uh, invited me to come on and be the reporter. Ten years ago, he was the bench boss with the New York Slapshots of the now defunct Atlantic Coast League. It was like the Lord gave me this opportunity to kind of fulfill, you know, maybe a dream or a goal, you know, to work on a national network like TSN. It was a very great time in Winnipeg. I was doing some radio programs, a show called God Talk on a secular radio station. We planted a church, and then it was at that time that I got involved uh, with the Voice of the Martyrs. 195 Christian families, that's 825 people. I mean, there's so many great people that I've met, you know, heroes of the faith with the voice of the martyrs. Although they say they're not heroes, they're just living their life for Jesus. But one of those was a lady named Lalani. Her husband had, uh, you know, become an evangelical Christian. He had been a Buddhist monk. And they were just seeing great things happening in the interior part of Sri Lanka. And she told the story one night, they're coming home from, you know, meeting with some of the people in their church and they're going, you know, God is just doing amazing things and we're so excited about it. They got home, there was a knock on the door. Uh, Lionel went to answer the door. As he opened it, he was shot. He was running, they were stabbing him. He was, 
He ran through the house, he went into the bedroom and they continued to stab him and he would die. He was taken to the hospital, but it was clear that he was gone. And Lalani said she put her hand on his cold body and said, Jesus, you have called us here. I will continue this ministry. Later on, she went home. Uh, she took her little son, Shamgar, into her arms, put him on her leg and said, the Lord giveth, looks at her little son, the Lord taketh, you've taken my husband home, Jesus, but blessed be the name of the Lord. She started five churches. She had this large church there in Sri Lanka. She is one of the leaders in the church, not just among women, but among the believers in Sri Lanka. She's an amazing lady. She just loves the people there. And uh, even those that, you know, killed her husband, because that's one of the first things she said. She looked up to heaven. I forgive those that have done this to, to me and have taken my husband from me. To be honest, it has been difficult. Um, I've had to, you know, seek out some counseling because you're hearing stories of death and destruction, of rape and murder, uh, villages being burned, and, and you're meeting the people that have had to endure this. So emotionally, it's been, it's been extremely hard at times. On the other side, it's incredibly built up my faith. People that are willing to die for the gospel and stories of, you know, like, hey, you know, we went through this, uh, we're suffering, but we are not quitting. We're gonna keep on going. 